Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. So on today's video, we are going to discuss a monopoly stock, right? We are going to have a detailed discussion about a monopoly stock and then I will help you understand whether or not you should be investing in this stock or not. Now interesting thing about this monopoly stock is that right now technical signals are giving a completely different indications. They are telling us that we should go and invest in this stock and fundamental signals are giving us a completely different indication. So I'm going to discuss both these things because usually on YouTube you will hear people speaking only about technicals or only about fundamentals but I'm going to mix and explain you both technically why it is sensible to buy this stock and fundamentally why it is not sensible to buy this stock. And finally I'm going to tell you whether or not I'm going to invest 5 lakh rupees in this stock tomorrow which is Monday. So let's get the video started and let me take you first and foremost by disclosing the name of the stock. So the name of the stock is CAMS. CAMS it means Computer Age Management Service Limited. Simply put it acts as a back-end data management system for different mutual fund houses. For example you have different mutual fund houses like HDFC, AMC, DSP, BlackRock and bunch of different mutual fund houses right. Now they need help in terms of processing data. For example if you want to switch your money from let's say HDFC, AMC, equity mutual fund to debt mutual funds then you're switching right. So via CAMS you can do that. Via CAMS, you can also take an aggregated look at your entire portfolio. So there is an app on CAMS that you can download on your phone and then that gives you an aggregated picture of different mutual funds that you own and hold. Now this is the overview of what CAMS does. Now here is a brief one paragraph description about CAMS. You can read it so that it helps you understand better what is it that we are going to speak about. This will help you understand what CAMS actually does, right? So I hope we are clear about that. Now moving on, why am I saying that CAMS is a monopoly? Simply put, because CAMS hold 69%, 69% of mutual fund registrar market share. Now this is huge. The market share of 69% is very big in any industry. Therefore, it's a monopoly. We can all agree to that. So this is the second key point. Before doing detailed technical and business analysis, let me very, very quickly, very, very quickly tell you why is it that this stock is being talked about so much recently. So let us quickly take a look at two specific points. So one, let me just take you through the entire overview of CAMS. And if you actually take a look at CAMS stock prices, you will see that, okay, the share got listed somewhere in October 20. So almost a year and it kept on going up and up and up, right? Now the recent downtrend is something that is unprecedented. Unprecedented means that this has never happened with this stock before. So this is point one. Very, very quickly, I wanted to take you through that. And if you actually take a look at the weekly performance of this stock, you will see that it has fallen by almost 12%. 12% huge for a monopoly stock to fall. So is this the right time to buy? Now final point before we start that technical business and financial analysis. Let me just show you one more very interesting chart. Right. This will help you understand the strength of this stock. Now you might be seeing these uptrending lines. Right. So this is Knoxville Divergence. Now I would not have the time to explain what Knoxville Divergence is on this video probably I'll make a separate video sometime in the future because if I integrate all these concepts in one video people start commenting that hey you know what Tapse Fun News new song came it is only three minute long you are making 25 minute long video so why should we watch your video so I'll be glad if you guys can share your experience of learning from my video so hopefully it will convert other people to watch these educational oriented videos also but let me take you through the topic and I'll make a separate video on what Knoxville Divergence is okay so you see these trending lines right so you see the starting of this line and then this line ends somewhere here right so this is a trend line right so the stock has always been on an upward trend line right consistently this is an upward trend line this is an upward trend line this is an upward 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 so all the time this stock has been showing an upward trending line the only abrasion happened here right where there was a downtrend line but otherwise this stock has always been on an uptrend so therefore when the stock has fallen so much everyone is thinking that hey monopoly stock fell by like 12 percent i'm going to buy it okay so should you be doing it let's start the discussion now the first point that you must decipher in terms of buying this stock is that why has this stock fallen by 12 percent what is the primary reason for it? Okay, the primary reason for it is that there is a company called as IIFL. So I'm taking you through the article. So IIFL is a private equity fund. I'll explain you the working of private equity fund also. So that fund had invested money in CAMS last year and this year it had already made 50 million dollars of return. So it has completely exited, right? So this is a very important term that you must understand. Completely exited means that it has sold its entire holding in CAMS. Now, is this a worrisome sign that a private equity fund is selling its 100% holding in a company that it has initially invested its money in? 
Okay, so this is a very interesting discussion and again I can speak about it for an hour about private equity funds but in the interest of time what I will do is that I will just help you understand the basic psyche between the difference between VC funds and private equity funds. So VC funds are short term funds, right? So what happens is that VC funds require something called as quick, quick exit, right? Quick exit means that hey, today I invest my money, three years I'm gone, right? So they are like retail investors, so to say. So I have put money on this stock based on Akshay's recommendation and I need the returns by tomorrow. Please don't be so impatient. Watch the entire video, understand all the concepts and then genuinely like by truly understanding, stay invested in different companies. Okay, now talking about VC funds, so VC funds require quick exits, not like retail investors which require like exits every 3-4 days, but VC funds usually exit a company in 2-3 years, that is the usual horizon for VC funds. Now private equity funds, the primary difference between VC and private equity funds are that private equity funds when they put in their money in a particular company, they do it from a long term horizon. Okay, this is a very important point for you to understand that private equity funds invest money for the long term perspective. Why is it? Because they bring something called as structural change, right? Structural changes in a particular company. For example, usually private equity funds go and buy sick companies, right? Sick companies means that if I am running a company, it is not doing well for whatever reasons, right? Management is bad, this, that. So private equity fund will invest money in this undervalued company, change the management, make different, different types of changes, add value to it and then find an exit. So this is usually the modus operandi of a private equity fund. This is how it differs from a VC fund. Now if you ask me that, hey Akshat, can you tell me that if IIFL private equity, if it has exited this particular stock, is it a good thing or a bad thing? Okay, to cut the long story short, this is a bad thing. Okay, fundamentally this is a bad thing because number one is that private equity funds should have stayed in this company for longer. It is strange that they have left it. Number two, another argument can be made that hey, they have already made like 50 million dollars, they have already hit their target. For example, it's like saying this, that you buy camps tomorrow with the target of making, let's say 20% return. Now you get that return in another month itself. And if you exit it, is that a good thing or a bad thing? For you, it's a good thing, right? Because you're doing a target based exiting of the stock. So we could make the following two arguments in favor of this result that hey, they have already achieved their target, therefore they have moved on or they have found better investment opportunity, right? They would have found the next camp, right? So therefore they have pulled out the money from here and rotated their money somewhere else. Now logic tells us that, hey, right now the market is hitting all time high. So it is highly unlikely that IIFL would have found very, very profitable opportunity. When I say very profitable opportunity, it means generating like 300, 400% returns, right? In this market, it is tough. It is very, very tough right now. So, okay. So what do we understand? Essentially, this fall of 12% has happened because a large investor has exited his position. Now, how can I help you verify this? Okay. So let me help you verify this. You can see the volumes right for the last three trading days that hey large selling has happened in this stock. Now when selling or buying comes with volume with massive volumes it means that there is some big player there right. There is exit happening at a massive level or there is buying happening at a massive level. So essentially to cut the long story short this massive selling has happened this has resulted in a 12% correction of this monopoly stock. Most likely what is the reason why IIFL has exited this because they have reached their target therefore they have exited the stock. It does not mean that the stock is bad. I will note these things down, otherwise it can get miscommunicated. So number one, it does not mean that the stock is bad. No, absolutely not. The stock is good. Number two, it does not mean that the stock will not give returns going forward. Not give returns, right, going forward. No, nothing like that. It will still continue to give returns, but not at the pace at which it has given returns. That's number two. So what should you do, right? So let's discuss the technicals very, very quickly here because now we already understand why the correction has happened. Okay, now let us understand the second key point that would the technicals support here if you buy it, okay? There was a technique that I had shown you earlier and you can watch it here and it's meeting that particular range based trading technique. Okay, so what do we do here? So we find a region where the stock has given an upswing. So here we will find that region and we will plot out a range, right? So let me plot out that range also. Essentially, what did I say on that technique? So essentially this stock had given an upswing of how much? 28%, 28.6% in this range, right? Now, whenever it hits this bottom line, right? Where from the point where it started taking a breakout, if it falls to that level again, that's a good buying level, right? That is what the technique tells us that this is range based trading, right? This is something that I do very frequently range based trades, right? 
So you can do this range based trading right now it's giving the right signal that you can do this range based trading on this particular stock. Can it fall further down? Yes, it can, but it's very unlikely that it will not come back up, right? So therefore, this is a good stock. It can give you potentially a 28% return in less than six months. This is what I'm betting on. Now you would say, Akshat, okay, great explanation. The technique works. It has worked in the past. Probably it will work the same time. But why are you so conflicted about the stock? That why are you not investing huge sums of money on this stock right now? So for that, you need to understand the fundamental analysis of this stock and ask yourself a very basic question that, hey, is this stock overvalued? Now, how would you decide whether this stock is overvalued? And intuitively, we understand the point that a company like IIFL, which is a private equity fund, would not have exited, would not have exited this stock if this stock had also great growth potential from this stage, right? From this stage, if it could have grown by another 200-300% then why would IFL exit this opportunity? It doesn't make sense, right? So we need to really look into the question that, hey, is this stock overvalued or not? Now, in order to figure out if a stock is overvalued or not, we can use two techniques. The first technique is called as present value of future cash flows, right? So present value of future cash flow simply means that, for example, if this company generates $100 next year or 100 rupees next year, next year, after that, it generates like $150, then it generates $200, then you discount it by a particular rate, right, which is the rate of return, right, you add this, to, this is year three, and here you discount, you discount this number back, whatever this the present value gives you the present value of the firm, and you divide it by the number of shares, so that should be the present value of the stock. Okay, now very quick explanation. What is this X? X is the discount rate. Discount rate means what? It is the expected rate of return. For example, when Akshat's internal discount rate or expected rate of return is 15 to 20%, right? Because this is the amount of money that I hope to make from the money that I'm investing. Similarly, this X is the return that the company is expecting to make, right? This is the internal rate of return. This is what it is called as. It is also called as discount rate finance don't get scared but bottom line is that this is one way of valuing stocks now this is super difficult to do for early stage companies why is it because simply put these early stage companies do not have a lot of financial data and it becomes like a little bit of a challenge to understand whether that data is true or not or whether you know ifl has come in and supported it beyond measures to expedite that growth so bottom line is that with early stage companies because we do not have enough cash flow statement present we can't generate or build this model systematically so therefore we move on to a second technique called as reverse discounted cash flow now reverse discounted cash flows means that we are trying to estimate right estimate that is the growth rate growth rate of cash flows of the company can it keep on growing at a certain rate right so let me demonstrate by actually using the technique here and helping you explain it more I will again not get into many details because again like same thing hey Badshah's new song is here 3 minute 5 minute your video 25 minute okay so I'll explain it in a quick format so that you understand the concept and then you can do further research on it okay so in order to implement this reverse discounted cash flow technique what you need to do is that you need to go at a company level and look at the free cash flows of the company right and the latest free cash flows of the company so it comes out to be approximately 238 right so that is the free cash flow of the company what is free cash flow free cash flow essentially means it's net income so net income means that you know if the company sells a hundred rupee pen right and it is taking 50 rupees to sell it right there is like material cost labor cost all that so net profit is 50. Now, if you adjust it in terms of capital expenditure also that the company is taking because company might be building another pen development factory. So if you adjust that also, that is the available cash that the company has. That becomes free cash. This cash is completely free. So the company can do a lot of things. For example, it can pay out dividends. It's like a liquid money for the company. So in case this is not clear, I'll make another video tomorrow. It comes out on monopoly stock again, another monopoly stock. Let me know if you would want me to make that video. So I'll explain that technique again and demonstrate it there again, depending on what clarity you want from me. So do comment in case this technique is not clear. So essentially we look at the free cash flow. So which is 238, right? And what we do is that then we go on to this growth model, right? So reverse discounted cash flow. So this is 238. This is the free cash flow of the company right now. Let's take the latest one. Okay. Now discount rate is the money that you want to make. For example, in my case, I want to make like 15% return because Nifty gives me like 12, 12 and a half, 13%. So essentially, if I'm taking risk with some individual stock, I will at least expect 15%, right? So I'll plug in 15%. 
and terminal multiple is very easy to figure out. So basically, if you take the terminal multiple, this is driven by company. For example, I run a company called as Cases Over Coffee. Now it's an edtech company. So edtech multiple these days comes out to be around 25 to 35, right? That's the usual multiple. Similarly, if you run a fintech company, then the multiple comes out to be a certain range. So on and so forth. So for financial services companies, it usually comes out to be not more than 25. That's a usual rate. So this changes the growth rate to 22.5%. Now this tells us, now what this tells us, I will explain this slightly more in a slower format. So essentially this 22.5, what does this indicate? It indicates that the cash flow of the company should grow at this rate, right? For the current share price, current market price of the share to be justified, right? So this is a very important concept. I'll say it again that the company needs to grow its cash flows by 22.5% for the current market price to be justified. So how we can figure this out that if the company is growing at a rate of 22.5, so use rule of 72. I have taught it multiple times, have talked about it on multiple videos. So rule of 72 means that, hey, if you divide 72 by X percent, right? For example, when you're putting your money in NFD, what is the usual rate, right? 6%. So if you divide 72 by 6, it's like 12 years. What does this 12 indicate? It indicates the amount of time it takes for you to double your money, right? Now, if we take 72 and divide it by 22, it comes out to be roughly 3.5. So we need to ask ourselves a question that, hey, if the company is doubling its cash flows or free cash flows every 3.5 years. So let's take a look, right? So we have the entire historic data of free cash flows. So we can take a look. So now before this was pre-listing, right? So 2014, this was like 33. So did it double its money by 2017? Yes, right? Almost tripled it. Great. So if we take the cash flow for the last three year window from March 2018 to March 2021, you will see that, okay, has it been able to double its cash flow in the three, three and a half year period? Yes. So 112 to 238. Correct. Now, Okay, then you will say, Akshat, this stock sounds like fundamentally fine. It's doubling its cash flows. So I've been saying that this is a good stock. There is nothing wrong with the stock. It's a fundamentally sound stock. So where did our model go wrong? Our model went wrong here, right? We assumed the best case scenario, which is assigning it a multiple of 25. Now, if we change this multiple, right? Because terminal value means that, hey, if cases over coffee right now is, let's say, a one crore company, right? And it operates for a period of 10 years, then we sell it off. Then at the time of selling it off, what is the multiple that the company is paying us? That hey, let's say that we keep on making like 1 crore, 1 crore, 1 crore for 10 years. Year 10, we are hitting 1 crore as free cash flows. Then what is the multiple that you will assign? You will assign a multiple of 25 max, right, in EdTech, so to say. But in this case, we have taken the highest multiple, which is 25. So we should take a rather more realistic multiple, which might be around 20, right? So here you are depicting a growth rate of 25, right? So every three year, it has to double. Now this is, we are literally hitting the verge, right? That in a more realistic scenario, we are literally hitting a verge where the company is just able to double its free cash flows. Can the company keep on doing it? I highly doubt it because the company was in an initial growth period. So in this growth period, it was easy for the company to keep doubling it. But as the company matures, so for example, two years or four years down the line, it might be struggling to do this, right? Then the correct assigned terminal multiple should have been around 15 or 16. How do we decide on terminal? Again, complex topic. I can't cover it on a short video. But essentially, what I'm trying to tell you is that a realistic scenario presents us the view that camps right now is literally at the top of its game in terms of valuation. Valuations are only going to come down from this stage. Therefore, fundamentally, the stock is overvalued. So this is about financials, but there is a more important reason at play, right? So let me rather take you through it. So if you actually ask yourself a second very important question that why is it that CAMs can go under. Now, this is my perception. I have not read about it. I might be wrong. So I'm already stating that. So if you actually take a look at the entire revenue breakup of CAMs, you will see that almost 82% of the revenue comes from data processing. Now, I'm just wondering that why is it that companies like HDFC, AMC, right? Or Nippon Asset Management, all these companies, why can't they create their own backend systems? back end system. I'm not saying that they might be able to do it completely in isolation, but my bet is that they might be able to take a lot of business away from CAMS, right? Because CAMS right now is doing a lot of back end work for HDFC, AMC, Nippon Asset Management, etc. But going forward, because even these HDFC, AMC, NAM India are not very old fund houses. 
as they mature hdfc mc or now they will start building their own systems processes for example bcg for example has a bcg back end office mckinsey has a mckinsey kc mckinsey knowledge center these are a big companies they used to do only front end work but with time they started doing back end work also so i am of the view that caps market share right in absolute terms caps market share will struggle right with time because all these companies might start their own back end services and that can hit the business this is something that i'm more worried about fundamentally with this stock therefore i am not going to invest on a 10 year basis or 5 year basis on this stock at all i will keep a track of the news on such stocks very very closely very very important for you to understand that tomorrow i'm going to show you a stock that literally moves through news right so we will have a detailed discussion about that also but for today please understand that two very major fundamental reason one is that i showed you reverse discounted cash flow model which proves that the stock price is inflated right now number two the growth potential is struggling third important reason that we are missing now is that this company does not have support of iifl anymore now the, all these contracts etc that it might have been winning might have come due to iifl support right now ifl has gone away so i am a little bit worried that what happens to their existing contracts also so risky from a fundamental perspective but sound from a technical perspective so what is it that i am going to do so i am going to buy this stock on monday so i am going to invest a decent amount of money in this stock of course i am going to keep tracking the news over the weekend if any news flows in if i get any additional information i might change that trade but 90% i am in this trade i am going to take that swing trade and exit it once it hits our target so that is a simple strategy that i'll follow i am not going to invest in this stock from a long term perspective you will see almost all youtubers saying that hey you know what we are going to invest in this stock for long term but they never tell you that hey which stock they are going to invest in short term and not take a long term trade on this if you know someone do tell me in the comments but very very unlikely that people would be making these type of bets i am telling you i hope you like the video do give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends it would mean a lot to me Thank you so much and I will see you the next time.